You ready to move to the NFC? Come on. NFC East. We'll start with the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. 10 and 6 last year. To win the division championship, they are plus 175 this year. Strength of schedule is 21st. Their turnover margin last year was 12th in the league at plus 3. Um, offense, total yards per play, number 22 in the league at 5.4 yards per play last year. Total yards per play on defense, they were number 13. They only gave up 5.4, so not bad. Uh, offensive coordinator is Kellen Moore, head coach Jason Garrett, uh, defensive coordinator Rod Marinelli. They're projected favorites in nine games this year. Uh, of course, we got to figure out what goes on with Zeke Elliott. Um, let me tell you an interesting story. Only 10 teams in NFL history have won nine one-score games, and the 2018 Cowboys were one of those. Out of their 10 wins, nine of them were by one score. Now, they, they only lost one one-score game. Now, is that good coaching, or is that lucky, or what it... So, here's what part of it is. In 2018, their first half offense was number 12 in efficiency in the NFL. They, they had a 48% success rate. They were pretty good. In the third quarter, that dropped to number 25 efficiency. They were way too conservative. Wait, they just, just started say, running the ball. You mean Jason Garrett? Exactly. Not, not yeah. being aggressive? They, uh, they were number nine that shocked me. in defensive efficiency last year. They improved from number 25 to that. So their, their defense, uh, it was number 25 three seasons ago. Number 11, two seasons ago. Number nine last year. They just keep getting better. Rod Marinelli has done a really good job. Correct. They traded for Robert Quinn. Um, you know, I, I think that they signed Randall Cobb. They drafted Tony Pollard from Memphis uh, at running back to take over for Zeke if he's not there or whatever. Or to split time with him because you can't just have one. Um, because you don't know what's going to happen. But, yeah, what, what happens with, with Zeke Elliott? I mean, is that the, the key to this? I mean, yeah. we know what Dak Prescott is. We think. We know what Amari Cooper is. I don't, I don't know that we know what Dak is. That's the problem. Jason Whitlock came out this week and made one of the best comparisons I've ever seen to Dak. I think Dak is a really good quarterback. I don't. I kind of tend to crap on Dak a lot, and I don't mean to. It's just I, I crap on the, the Cowboys a lot, and that just <laughs> he just he just kind of gets it on him. But but I like Dak. But. The comparison Whitlock is, is Dak is that great, unbelievable toy you get for Christmas that requires batteries. And Amari Cooper and Zeke Elliott are his batteries. Yeah. And if you don't have both those batteries, your toy kind of sucks. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this. A, good thing this problem, if you're a Cowboys fan, is with your team and not somebody else's, and you're not a fan of someone else. Jerry is your owner. If they play two to three games without Zeke and they don't win all three of them, Jerry going to pay Zeke. Oh, yeah. Zeke will be back by week five, no questions asked, unless they are 4-0. Oh. and And okay. he'll be on a he'll be, crazy because, contract. Because you've got the owner that cares more about winning than anything else. And I don't know that there's another owner in the league that is as competitive as Jerry Jones is. And he's not going to let money he don't care about future contracts. He don't yep. care about next year's team. He cares about right now what's right in front of him. So if I'm a fan, I know this. If you're drafting in fantasy leagues, know this. Just just pretend he's on a four-game suspension because he's going to be back. Yeah. The only way he's not is if the Cowboys go 4-0 and in those first four games and they look really good. Then somebody might tell Jerry, look, man, maybe we don't need him. That's the, that's the only way that happens. Yeah. If if and when he comes back, I think this team's going to be good, but I think they're going to lose some games early, and I think that's going to affect the schedule. I kind of assumed them being a 7-9 and nine team this year. That's what I saw them as. I think I do think Zeke's going to sit out. I do think Zeke's going to miss some games. It's going to take the knees out from under him. I got them 7-9. and Because I thought they were – did I say 7-9 and nine early? I thought they were 9-17. and 17. That's exactly and, what I've got him at. I've got him nine and seven. I got him seven and nine because I think they're going to lose some games early without Zeke, and I don't think you can just make those up. I don't think you're going to win two extra games that you would have normally not won. Do you and think I think Zeke that's hard. Means that much? Yes, I really do. In a okay. in a league in which running backs don't mean a lot, 
Not every team is built the same. Not every team has the same identity. Now, and I right. truly believe he's the best player on that team. He's the most important player on that team. Okay. okay. I will tell you one thing, and we said this last year. Oh, they're over under, by the way. The season. Oh, yeah. Over under is uh, is nine. nine. I was about to say. And yeah. over is plus 100, under is minus 120. That's right. So. so, my initial response when they hired Kellen Moore as an offensive coordinator was, man, this ain't going to work out. And I kind of I kind of didn't like that hire, and I thought it wasn't going to be good. I'm not a Jason Garrett fan to begin with, and yeah. so I think he needs a strong coordinator. I might be wrong on that. Um, Kevin Clark from The Ringer brought this brought this uh, topic up last year when they made the hire, or not in the offseason when the, when the promotion happened and the hire happened. I think the guys going to a more college football-style offense is a good thing, not a bad thing. I think it helps that. Kellen, yes, they're going to spread things out. I'm trying to find the best way to say this. Kellen Moore is a college guy. He played all those years at Boise State. He understands Chris Peterson's offense. Man, if you could get Chris Peterson's offense. And <laughs> his brother works for Fresno State, right? Yeah. And, and, and he's in the college world working with creative uh, uh, play calling. I actually think he's going to be a boost if Jason Garrett takes the handcuffs off of him and lets him call plays. But when you're right, when they get leads – Man, Jason Garrett might be the – he coaches afraid more than any coach I've ever seen in my life. A hundred percent. And that hurts his team. Yeah, yeah. I got, him seven, I got him seven and nine. I think I think Zeke's going to sit out a couple of games. I think there's winnable games on that schedule that they're going to lose. It's, I've, like I said, I've got him nine and seven. I like that defense a lot. Uh, schedule, I think, sets up well, et cetera. So – 